Hi, Poké Nation. It's Mrs. Delanis again, and we are ready for another celebrity teacher interview. So today we have Miss with us Mr. Matt Alexander, and welcome, Mr. Alexander. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, surviving, surviving this online teaching thing? Uh, barely, I think, but yes, I'm there. Getting <laughs> lots of help from my, my furry children. Nice. Those are the best kinds of kids, man. All they do is love you. Yep. And you can lock them away and go away. <laughs> That's true. All right. So let before we get into my questions, I'd like you to just take a couple minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been teaching a pokey, just, just a couple of minutes, or minutes or so about yourself. Okay. Uh, this is year seven, six or seven, I forget. It's been a while. I uh, teach uh, AP Chemistry, Honors Chemistry, and AP Stats mostly. Uh, been in Pokey or in Pocatello for oof, almost twenty years now, uh, here and there, and married with four fur babies. Nice. All dogs, Cat dogs and cats. What do you got? Uh, I have. Two dogs, uh, an Australian Shepherd and a three-legged uh, Rottweiler mix, question mark, and then two cats. So is there a story behind that missing leg or did you just, was he just born that way? Uh, so my wife does home health and she found him at one of her patients' house just out, out in the boonies. And uh, it sounds like, or looks like someone shot him with a shotgun and left him to die. So he, yeah, he, my wife grabbed him up and it was actually, I was teaching and uh, between classes, I checked my phone and I had two missed uh, calls and a miss and a text message saying, call me. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's, you know, crisis mode. And I call her and I'm, oh, I just, you know, before we could, they could fix him, then we had to adopt him. So I just made an executive decision and we have a new dog. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, that was really sweet of her. I mean, we need people like your wife and you and the world just rescued these poor animals, but that's kind of funny. Yeah. That's what happened. Our, uh, our youngest cat was a similar. She founded a, a patient's house and got to bring it home. He was, uh, she was little tiny one just fit in the palm of your hand and was all kinds of sickly and now she is crazy we had to build a catio um, to contain her <laughs> because she kept escaping our backyard she kept escaping did you say yes she would jump the fence and then she would go wander the neighborhood and Isn't she that what cats are supposed to do is jump fences and wander neighborhoods climb trees not when they're not savvy enough to not know how to manage uh, cross streets. So she would go across the road and, you know, so she has her own little apartment outside now. Well, maybe she was actually savvy enough to fool you into giving her a little apartment. Like if I act crazy um, enough, they'll just build me my own digs. Pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so I have 50 random silly questions, and I'm going to have you do five of them. So okay. just you're going to pick numbers between one and 50, and whatever question you get, you get. Okay. Uh, All right. Number seven. All right, number seven. Well, oh, this is an easy one. Okay. What football team do you support and why? Ah, uh, Mike. Well, it's kind of embarrassing, but since I was a little guy, I've been a Buffalo Bill fan. It's when I was starting to watch football, that was when they went to four Super Bowls in a row. And of course they lost all four Super Bowls in a row. <laughs> and then didn't go back for a long, oh, well, they've never been back to the Super Bowl, but they kind of fell off the map. So, but I'm a Bills fan. There it's out for everyone to know. Some secrets are just better left shared, so you don't have to carry that burden alone, buddy. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Give me another number. Uh, 
27. All right. If you were an animal, if you were an animal, a can of soup, or some other random object, what would you be? Wow. Hmm. Well, based on our previous conversation, I think that I would be one of my wife's animals. So, well, be my cat. Then. Yeah, she's lots of uh, lots of love and support. And you don't have a preference whether you'd be a dog or a cat or whatever? Not really. I I'd probably lean more towards the cat, a little more independent. But still like the snug snuggles. Cats have got some attitude too. We, I've got two cats and they, they definitely have attitude. So Oh yes. Our our youngest one, she'll you walk in the door and she just starts yelling at you and you have a little conversation with her and then she comes up and paws at your leg and you have to pick her up and then she'll like drape herself around your neck and just talk in your ear. She's pretty funny. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Give me another number. Uh, 35. All right. Who would win a battle between a ninja and a pirate? I think I would definitely have to go with Ninja. Really? They're, the cat-like reflexes. I just don't, I don't, I mean, I know that pirates would fight dirty, but I yes, think my mind would still be on the Ninja. I don't know. Pirates without that, that, those swords and the swashbuckling and the flying around from rope to rope. And I don't know, they might be a tough opponent. I think they would, but I, I'm going to stick with Ninja. Jen Van Oshinova is with you. In fact, I learned about from her that her husband is like a ninja. I don't know. He's ninja obsessed, I guess I should say. They're, they're, her, and, her and her husband are very into ninjas, apparently. Wow. Hmm. I know. The things you learned. You've got to watch her interview. She, she revealed some pretty crazy things. So. Okay. All right. One more question. or no, Give me another number. 42. All right. Would you rather fight? Would you rather fight one elephant-sized pigeon, or fifty pigeon-sized elephants? I think I'd do fifty pigeon-sized elephants, because, uh, yeah, that's like a dinosaur would be an elephant-sized <laughs> pigeon, and that's just terrifying. So I think I would go. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I envision 50 little elephant tusks, you know, a hundred well, little mini tusks coming at your shins. That sounds pretty brutal. Yeah. Well, I probably won't be able to sleep tonight. So thank you. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> One giant pigeon, you could probably just throw it a loaf of bread and you could probably keep them distracted and then jump on them or something. That's true. Hmm. I don't know. Food for thought, I guess. <laughs> food, food for thought for sure. Okay, give me another number. Uh, 11. All right. When you go on vacation, when do you pack your suitcase? Uh, so I am a pre-packer. So I usually pack a couple days ahead of time because I always forget something. And that gives me a couple days to remember the things that I forgot, hopefully. Um, my wife and I did that when we went to the British Isles and we remembered several things in the couple days between that we had to go grab. And we didn't forget anything that we know of. I, I pack like hours before I leave and I figure if I forget something, I'll buy it. Yeah, no, nope. too much of a pre-planner. Yeah, and I and I and I run by the seat of my pants. Like, all right, well, whatever it is, it is. It's going to be. So if I if I pre-plan too much, then it's just not my nature. Yeah. All right, give me another question. Man, we're not done yet. Uh, no. 
I don't know what number we're on, but we're doing one more. Okay. Uh, let's see. 36. What was the last book you read? Um, let's see. I just read um, The Subtle Knife, which is in the Philip, uh, I forget his last name, uh, but it's the Golden Compass series. And I'm just finished listening to Good Omens, which was hilarious. Well, I haven't heard of any either of those books. So are they like, are they um, fiction, nonfiction? What kind of books are they? Uh, they're fiction. So uh, the Golden Compass series is kind of an alternate reality um multiple worlds type thing where they kind of open up this portal between worlds and then they go and the main character is trying to of course save the universe um so there's one more in that one that i i have a friend who has it but i get to get that one when we're off quarantine so um but good omens is kind of a, a farce on Kind of the creation story so there's actually it's a amazon prime series right now but um it's just there's a angel and a demon who were there at the beginning and they really like humanity but their bosses are set on this armageddon idea and so they're trying to subtly uh, avert the end of the world and of course the son of the devil comes and they mix up the baby at, at birth. And so he gets raised by completely normal people and then ends up deciding that he didn't really want to end the world, that he just wanted to continue. So it was, but it was very, very funny. Highly recommend. <laughs> It doesn't sound very funny. So what was the no, name of the was, first one? Uh, the Subtle Knife was the last one. So Golden Compass, Subtle Knife, and then the third one is um, the Amber Spyglass. So that one reminds me of an adult version of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. You know, they go through this portal. They've got to save the other world. I think they it's still... Aliens or still, animals. Uh, actually, so in the Golden Compass, they... Each of the people have uh, a daemon, which is like their little spirit animal, only it's it's there. And so, um, and the children, their, their spirit animal can change between different animals just periodically, just randomly. But when you become an adult, then it becomes fixed. But yeah, it, I think it's similar idea. Um, but I think it's, it's still kind of a young adult theme. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to reading adult books. <laughs> grown up books are no fun. Sometimes I've, exactly. I've read, I read lots of grown up books and sometimes I'm just like, why am I reading this? Exactly. All right. One last question for good measure. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, Clearly I don't know how to count two. to five. I don't know what number we're on. I think this is seven, two? but that's okay. Yeah, number two. You've been given an elephant. Apparently, we like elephant questions. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? Hmm. Man. I don't know. I think I would uh, start a landscaping business, and it can help me... Uh, <laughs> Move heavy objects. Move trees. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you'd probably get a lot of onlookers. You could probably sell tickets to the landscaping as well. There we go. You gotta pay for the feed somehow. <laughs> you could bring him to football games and kids could ride him around and he could, you know, trumpet and we'd have Makes a blast. Sense. Sounds like good good time. <laughs> Does sound like a good time. All right, Matt. Well, thanks for being here and letting us see a little glimpse into the, the man behind the man. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.